blessing of life. Welcome to the stream. This is Confluence, the liminal village in the Ark. Tonight we're going to have a panel on visionary art culture creators. I am Delvin Solkinson, representing the Elvish nation of Hallowed Canadia and Pod Collective. I'm going to give a little drop about art culture and a micro introduction to our panel and producers. Get things flowing with a few questions, then we'll moderate as people from the crowd ask intelligent, clear, well thought out questions. Our cusp culture is born into an age of deep transformation, ripe with new avenues for artistic expression, in a world of rapidly dissolving borders and boundaries, the links between the world of the imaginal and the world of the material are deepening their weaves. With access to the knowledge and history of all cultures of the world, what was once separated by distance and language is now being melded together. The modern artist is steeped in influences from all artistic genres and art eras. Fueled by the World Wide Web and vast evolutions in the quality of communication technologies, artists everywhere are being empowered to share their work with an increasingly global audience. Nodes, collectives, forums, and galleries are emerging to represent countries, continents, and even newly networked art culture movements. It is a time potentized by the possibilities a civilization reconnected with its imaginal roots in the dreamy expanse of the limitless human imagination. Art culture represents a return to the re-sacralized, re-spiritualized, and revitalized future. A global art culture is getting connected, and with it come undreamt of potentials for collaborative artistic evolution. There is a new sheen on the surface of what art means for human culture, and how it is helping to shape the context in which the future is being birthed. So I'm here with CJ and Nasco, producing The Liminal Village. CJ is doing the visuals tonight, the VJ, representing On Beyond Metamedia. And we got Nasco from Invisible and Interchill taking care of the music. In the past few booms, we've been representing together as Crystal and Spore. It's a pretty historic panel of art culture creators we have here from North America, Europe, Asia, and Oceania. We have Leo Plow, helped create BNR and Gallery 5 websites, community builder, networker, uh, avid art creator. We have Luke Brown from Spectralize, created all manner of clothing, statues, prints, banners, books, installations, galleries. We have Carrie Thompson, representing Galactivation, created so many events, put together galleries, built temples, installations. Um, here he's built a lot of the gates and the Cloud Pagoda out back. We have Andrew Jones, used to represent with Massive Black, uh, doing live digital painting here, multimedia environments, a prolific art presence at countless events and gatherings. We have Zari, representing Zoetic Art and Symbiosis. She's created so many art culture events, festivals, galleries, does photographs, builds websites. And we have Lawrence Karuna, Re Visionary Review, who wrote the famous Manifesto of Visionary Art. He does seminars, talks, creates media, does community development, and runs websites. So welcome to everyone here and to uh, our panel. So I'm going to start things rolling with a couple of questions. Um, the panel can just decide who wants to answer and we'll just kind of keep it cash, keep it organic. What is the role of art in the emerging culture? Question one. Start us off here. The role of art 
in the emerging culture. Thanks, sir. That's a really broad question, and that goes into the definition of what is art and what is culture. And in a lot of ways, those two are, are intermingled expressions of each other. Uh, and art, you know, there's always the classic debate, does art reflect culture or does culture reflect art? And in this time, uh, if we are specifically discussing the, the culture here we are right now with you know, people traveling across borders and across uh, expanses of the mind that have not yet been traversed and combining influences from geographical and chronological intersections to create new conceptions. At this time, perhaps, in my personal opinion, art is changing its form in many ways from being perceived as perhaps a two-dimensional flat space and more of a of a multimedia expression format and people are becoming perhaps more and more accepting of various uh, artistic expressions as uh, taking them more seriously perhaps and as an expression of culture we have uh, a lot of ways to do it now not just paintings or, or visual art even performance art anyone else want to hit that one? Yeah, I believe uh, the role of art is really important in culture today because, you know, it provides insights and possibilities into what is, you know, uh, potential roadmaps and you know, ways that culture can be, you know, steered towards. And art has the amazing power to transform individuals within, you know, at the base cellular level. And through that individual change, you know, it shifts and continues to affect other people and exponentially creates, you know, a, a movement, a snowballing effect to, you know, affect the global culture, ultimately, you know, through today's means of communication and, and cross-pollination and all these means that we have to, to share these new ideas, you know, and the intention that we put behind the art really infuses and crystallizes that experience and, and the transference of, of that intention through the art as the amazing, one of the most powerful ways in Potentially, you know, like ultimately transforming, you know, the people and ultimately the world, you know, through the initial shift that occurs, you know, and that uh, core level that occurs in the being, in the body. Art always. Um it shows the new direction. It takes us to places that we've never been before. All, even down onto a basic design level, everything that you see around you has been created by a human mind, by a human hand. And it takes somebody of a creative mindset to visualize these things and to manifest these things and to bring them forth. So, regardless of what art form that we're talking about. Um, it's artists who manifest our future. And with regards to the future that you're talking about, we're reflecting the age of the aeon that we're moving into. And that is why the sort of the, the, peculiar, the peculiarity of what our art form is, why it is becoming so prevalent is because it matches, it resonates with the time and the need, the age in which we live in now. Okay, I'll focus the question in a little bit now. What is the function of art at the boom? It could be your art, it could be art in general. What is the function of art at the boom? Pass it down to Lawrence. The way I see it is that uh, what we're trying to create here at the boom is a sacred space. And the sacred space is also a space where you yourselves can reach beyond your own limits uh, within your own capabilities. 
So how are you going to do that? You can do that on the dance floor, and I think that's a great place to do it in the theater. You can do it just by being alone on entheogens and enjoying the space for what it is, or you can come to the gallery. And I think that the whole potential of this gallery is much different from galleries that you see out on the streets in any town where the art's just sit there for sale and for you to perhaps uh, buy it because you like it, you know? That here, the art is being shown, it's for free, it's, it's just there for you to come, to look at, to gaze upon. And as you gaze upon it, I think the art starts to open up its doors, it opens up the doors that are inside of you. And as you start to interact with the art and it becomes more and more uh, really a trip, it becomes a journey, it becomes a voyage, and uh, that brings you to that sacred place. That's what we're looking for. We're here in the sacred space, but that sacred space that's inside of you, that's what's coming out when you're looking at a work of art, really with your eyes open. So I think that's what we're trying to do by providing the art here in this space. I can speak of a, a, a personal relationship that I have with the, the art that's here and with uh, reflections that I'm receiving from a lot of people that are interacting with what's been brought here. And in a way, it really reinforces on, a, on an atomic level for me what, what, what my own mission with my art and the, the purpose behind it, you know, these reflections that people have with it, what it is that I'm creating and you know, with a lot of the artists that are here is like replicating with accuracy these you know, really specific visionary states and you know, these qualities of consciousness that we're accessing and, and interpreting that with our, our, our skills. And, and uh, you know, I I'm so grateful for the kinds of reflections that I've received from people for what they, they're experiencing with this art for you know, really profound experiences that people have that, you know, are just so visionary and, you know, they may not have the, the, the skill set to be able to manifest it in this particular form. I mean, there's an infinite spectrum of forms that you can manifest that those kinds of, you know, profound revel revelationary states that you might experience. And, uh, you know, it's something that it kind of reinforces a, a, a role or a task that I feel assigned to me with, with my art and to be able to kind of like map this hyperspatial dimension and, you know, try and convey it with accuracy and try and, you know, really pay close attention to the architecture of these inner dimensions. And, and a lot of the reflections I receive from people is that they, they're, it's completely familiar to them and, you know, they're so grateful for it that you know that they you know that they don't have to do it they don't have to like they don't have to paint it because somebody is doing it for them you know so, yeah <laughs> yeah I, w I would definitely concur with what luke said um for me i do a, I bring a lot of my art to the like a festival circuit and i find that for me, my art is really about communication and communicating with people, and I find that by sharing it in this setting opposed to a traditional gallery or, say, on the internet or in a book where you're removed, I find that I'm able to really immerse myself in authentic experiences with people and experience the reflection that they have on what I'm doing. I find a lot of the times when I'm working that I'll work on a piece and I might not really know it's true intention or why I'm making it, but through the feedback of other people, uh, a lot of that becomes clear to me, and I gain that, I gain that clarity, and uh, yeah, it's a, very, it's a very potent experience. Yeah, I think a, a lot of us here are involved with uh, so many festivals, um, you know, including large events in the States, such as Burning Man, which is a huge exhibition of art on all levels, and installation and scales. But Boom, more than any other festival that I'm aware of, is super global and international. So art is uh, very important at this festival because it gives us an opportunity to see what other artists in other parts of the world are doing. And in essence, that is so revelatory because we can see that we're all collectively tuning in to something that's happening on a global scale, which is a, a really important thing to realize that yeah, it's not an isolated experience that we're all going through. 
it's yeah it's, it's, it's this feel that's you know occurring across the whole globe and that you know as artists we have like resonating potential to tune into these frequencies and translate and sort of serve as conduits for what's going on and here we can see how people in different parts of the world are translating those energies that are coming through and for all of us to be able to see what we're doing and kind of share ideas and cross-pollinate and that's what's happening that's what's so important that we like make these connections and gain you know creative insights from other people from other parts of the world and that's really what's necessary to get this movement happening and catalyze a quickening you know and just really accelerate what's happening and just share and just get this feedback occurring that's really going to like open up these portals for us to receive more of what's coming through in order to create the shift that we're all envisioning and co-creating and dreaming so that's why boom i think is so important because it's so international and so global and i think that's you know what we all realize here and that's what we're doing we just need to keep doing it thank you well maybe i can turn it over maybe elf for you out there maybe you want to start things off from uh, the crowd i'm going to ask people who are going to ask questions to come up maybe and use this mic self out there otherwise someone else could come up here maybe not Uh, I think we're going to start off with Elf here. You want to ask a question on the mic? Yeah, one thing I was thinking about was uh, uh, in, in, in relationship to the things you do is what is the I mean, you know there's a lot of intention about what effect you want to produce in the viewer or like the ideal viewer and even though many people have different ways they react to it you must it, it, are you aware of thinking like okay I want to concentrate energy or I want to channel this kind of thing in terms of the design that, that you're working at do you want to trigger some aspect of your own visual perception like what like on a finer level what the intention is yeah it's like a way like what the deep that even that one just to think about what is it what is the attention to detail about well uh, question. Yeah. Is there I, I feel like the my relationship with my art is is a really fine-tuning that process with what just the, you know the, the effect that intention can have you know, in the transference of the intention, that it's not just in the in the symbols that appear in it, or in the composition, or in the you know, but it's actually a tangible resonance that's emanating off of whatever's been created, whether it's on the surface of a canvas, or it's in an installation, or it's in a space that's generated, or it's in a you know, the intention becomes a part of the field itself, you know, and is actually like maintains. You know, in, in in whatever that that object is, and and I, I I experience that personally all the time with having an intention that's so clarified in what the, with the origin of a certain image and like what that means, and carrying that with me as I'm creating it, and then having reflections all the time that are exactly that, as if it just like transferred over without any dilution you know and so I, I recognize that you know we could we it's it's really important to really fine-tune that that you know we're not just like you know that we have an opportunity to to really hold a specific role to you know to to offer a, a medicine you know and, uh, and and for me just like yeah just Conveying that with as, as much accuracy as possible, with, with you know, what that experience is. Yeah, I love you, you, the way you use the word accuracy because it's that's one of the things. It's like a there's a clarity that comes through all this fucking madness. I mean, it's crazy the imaginal realms and all they're spinning up. But there's something about coming away with the sense of being able to have a 
to recognize the, pat the deep patterning through clarity that's really communicated, then other nervous systems pick up on that, and then you can kind of share that intentionality. That's really that's cool. In my own work, I, I do photography as well as painting, and they're very two diverse forms of art. When I take photographs, I don't do staged or pre-prepared portraits of any kind. I only shoot things just exactly as I see them in the moment, and I don't set the photos up in any way. And when I do painting, for me, it's almost like my opportunity to take a brief snapshot of, um, of a very chaotic and multi-dimensional experience and try to capture that into something that I can remember and take back with me and it almost becomes a, a totemic piece, you know. My, my images often are self-portrait-like but a very um, loose interpretation, shall we say, where in the image I have an opportunity to, uh, to use symbolic and cultural references from my own experience as well as to become a part of, in a greater context, defining new symbolisms and new patterns that begin to create resonance in people. When you start to see these things over and over and over again in certain contexts that didn't necessarily have a shape or a, a meaning before, we're actually adding to the depth of the symbolism as we continue to use this imagery. And so when we start to define these things through creating specific colors and forms and trying to define that space, it gives people an opportunity to start to look for thematic uh, occurrences and to say, you know, I identify with this or that part of that experience and to be able to, to it validates it for, for some people in some ways and as well as myself to be able to see it in a tangible form and then makes it more real and I can pick out the parts that are relevant to me and, and take them on into the future and, and use something from the experiences I had. Hey, you know, sometimes I think I'm, I'm really selfish because I, I use art just to navigate the mystery of the human experience. There's sometimes that my intention of creating art is to reflect the beauty of the world that I see around that I can't understand. There's sometimes I make art to express the frustration of this experience that at times makes absolutely no fucking sense to me whatsoever. You know, but it's the times where I'm able to step outside of, of myself and my story and create something from a place that I don't know where it came from. And it's when I can create a work like that and it can hit a chord in someone else and when that chord is reflected back in me, that's what that's why I choose to do it on a daily basis. I find with the detail with my artwork, I'm led into that space, led into that direction. It's, um, it's an exploration that quite often I don't know where it's leading me. And it's only through finally going through that whole process and finally at the end considering what I've done and sometimes at quite length, quite a length, length of time afterwards, do I come to realise what the journey is that I've actually been engaged in and then can I define, uh, divine uh, the meaning of what I've actually created or what I've been led to create. And this is what entertains me so much about um, artwork, about painting, is that quite often in this process I see imagery, I see the symbolism appearing again and again and again that others before me have created and it shows me that there is an understanding beyond our personal selves that we can connect to and through which we, we can arrive at a point of, of greater understanding. I think that's the truth, absolutely. I think I know with my own art, and I could probably say for everyone else here, our art is simply a, you know, a process of ego dissolution. You know, we, we release and we surrender and let go and allow you know, these, these energies and impulses to come through us. And through that, what occurs is you know, a connection to the, you know, the holographic continuum that is everything. And through that, people 
have the opportunity to, to resonate and reflect with, with what comes through. And when they see something and they can recognize and acknowledge that that's a part of themselves, they see a connection there and they see that they're connected to the artist in a way that's beyond the physical. And through that, our intention is to show how they are connected to the entire sphere of consciousness and thus we're all connected in that sphere of consciousness and thus we're all connected to each other and everything and I know that's the primary intention with my own art is to reveal that connection that we have with everything and I think that's the schism that occurred um, you know millennia ago that has caused all the problems that we see on the planet right now and I think with my art and so much of the visionary art that's coming through it's it's its intention is to heal that schism and to restore the harmony that you know our planet has the potential to experience and to to create this state with with you know communities living in harmony and, and everybody living together and the whole universe pretty much being like you know a complete state of, of harmony and and I think you know the art that we're creating is one of the most powerful ways to convey that interconnectivity that you know, is so crucial for today for healing what's happening right now because it really has the ability to penetrate deep into our alien walls of our ego and create that cellular change and that shift is where it needs to occur within on the individual level and then on the community level and then beyond and beyond and beyond. So I think that, you know, crystallized intention to create that, you know, awareness of interconnectivity is what a lot of the visionary art is about, you know, to just show how we are all connected and through the symbology and through the forms and, and through the connection with nature that, you know, we are all one, we are all here doing this together and we're all, you know, co-creating this dream as, as well together. So if anyone from the audience wants to ask a question, you can come up to the stage left here and put you on the mic to ask a question. And I'll, I'll flow forward with one more. Come on out, don't be shy. Oh, you got one already, here we go. So, we've been talking about um, art as a form of uh, kind of a catalyst for the emerging culture and I just wondered um, like Boom for me and other festivals in a way are like a playground for experimenting a little bit of what that might look like when we all come together you know out of our studios and out of our different places where we create this art and we share in a one space kind of all these different forms of art so I just wondered if any of you had any visions of what that might be like in the future with um, art, especially within community and the different forms of art, um, you know, from, from performance to visionary to visual art to whatever you see within community. I just was hoping to get a little insight into some of your visions about that. You know, as you were talking, I was I was actually triggered by the word emerging culture because I hear that a lot. And the first thing that came up to me is just there is no emerging culture. This is our culture. Like right now and right here is the culture that we're in. You know, I think it's really about really experiencing what this is. I and mean, we can make predictions or I can make a hypothesis of how I see trends or how I see things are happening. But I think part of the problem is that I might try to visualize too much and not give the not give the future a chance to really unfold because I'm not really being here enough. I mean look around, I mean yeah, I'd love to I'd love to postulate about an emerging culture, but I'm at this moment I'm so satisfied to be in this culture that we are right now, right now in this moment. One, one other thing I'd like to add to that too is that, that art in a lot of ways is, is in a form of brutally honest communication about oneself and one's feelings and you really put it out there for the world to see and interpret and love or hate or feel whatever they want about it. And in this culture now, one thing that we can recognize that is very precious 
is that we are all free to brutally expose ourselves in a creative manner and be accepted uh, freely for that here. And this is an excellent representation that everyone here is free to be their own sort of artist, to make a creation and expose and share yourself, be in the gallery, be on the dance floor, and to, to recognize that this is a culture of, of acceptance of personal expression and personal self, and to remember to receive these expressions with, uh, with care, because they are delicate expressions of ourself and also of the great community that we are in as well and to be an artist of your own self and share your own personal expression is, is a very important part of this culture. Um, I just want to share with you a revelation I had uh, not too long ago and that's when I was at the World Psychedelic Forum in Basel and at the end of that forum they had a trans party on a boat, which was very difficult to get in, but once you got in, uh, for me, that's when the revelation took place. I was on in the hull of the boat, which is where the dance floor was, and they managed to bring visionary art and trans music together in a way that just blew my mind, because I was on the dance floor, I was moving with the music, they were thematically moving the entire evening through uh, the psychedelic Book of the Dead, so you had text at the bottom of the screen saying to you, O oh, noble brother, do not be afraid and uh, be ready to step into the next dimension. Do not fear the dancing puppets. And uh, so I would then move into the next dimension with the music, which was around me in five speakers, but also with the images, which were projected onto five uh, screens around the space as well. And there I was seeing images from Robert Venosa, from Martina Hoffman, from Andrew Gonzalez. Uh, and as the evening got darker, then you started to move into imagery from Giger and so on. And I thought, this is great. I'm not in standing still in front of a painting, just staring at it. I'm experiencing it totally in, this, uh, in my total sensual framework. I'm dancing, I'm moving, and it's everywhere I turn. It's, it's moving with the music. And I think this kind of um, Gesamtkunstwerk is what Wagner would call it, the total work where you bring the art and the music and the rapture of dance together into one experience. I think that's where we're trying to head in a way. And uh, it's kind of sad that, you know, we're not over there right now, we're over here. But uh, in the future, I think that uh, the DJs and the artists and the DJs and so on, the music creators, we can all start to work together closer and closer. It's, you know, it's happening, but we're getting we're moving towards it. And so I, I think that's where I see that we're moving towards is this kind of unity of vision. So it almost becomes, you know, the ritual of rapture. And uh, finally we'll maybe achieve that perfected ritual of rapture that will bring every one of you to the moment, you know, of, of sacred oneness. <laughs> Lawrence, well put. You basically just address the question that I was going to bring up, which is this idea of collaborative work. When I, um, when I first experienced a crystal and spore presentation a few years ago with NASCO and CJ and Delvin's work, this collaboration was what really struck me, this, the, the kind of subverting the lone artist, the lone hero artist paradigm, and moving beyond that into the, the space in between, the liminal, what's going on between egos and what can emerge from different media working together. And so I wanted to hear from, I, I know that many of you here on this panel have worked that way, and I want to hear a little bit what that experience has been for you to work collaboratively on paintings or on multimedia Well, personally, I, um, you know, there's a few artists here that have had really, yeah, phenomenal collaborative uh, experiments with, and you know, and it, what I've learned from that remains with me in, in, in such a positive way, and it has shown me this this, uh, this incredible process that happens when you're you're so aligned with your own element and 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 you know I, I 
I live my life as an artist and I, I cater all the elements of my life to support and to facilitate my creative process and I feel very grounded and confident and comfortable in that 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 role and I'm surrounded by all these you know phenomenal visionary heavyweights that that are also holding that kind of role within themselves and just seeing what happens when those kinds of energies come together and how impe impeccably they fit together you know and how and the ways that those creative processes even if they're really different just the way that it just magically synchronizes you know it's just this reflection of just what it is to just be in your elements and meeting someone who's also in their elements and just all the synchronous you know, the synchronections that start to happen and the, and the magic that starts to un unfold out of that and just seeing the ways that it just like yeah it's just something that's just so pristine in, in that kind of process no you know i've had i've definitely had lots of synchronistic moments and i've done a lot of work collaborative over the past decade but um you know, a lot of my interactions have been anything but synchronistic, and I think that's what I've learned the most of it, because when collaborating people, all, sometimes all your shit comes up when you do that, you know, and you're really, you're really called out on that. You know, what we're doing, and if art in a way is just is the manifestation of thought, you know, we're all thinking that, you know, this, this idea that we're all one, you know, if you're just working alone in your studio every night, then you're kind of being a hypocrite certain extent the way I look at it it's like um, we're all quite familiar with musicians jamming together well I've done work with uh, in, in doing VJing with uh, you know, bands musicians uh, you know, electronic gigs and it's absolutely amazing that you know, when you all start working together there's just a flow there's a synergy that starts to happen and it can come together with all art forms. Yeah, and that's when there's another higher level that it's all take, taken to, where everybody contributes their own creativity, and out of it, there's something brand new, something greater than the, the sum of the, you know, the parts. That's, that's the future we're heading towards. Yeah, it's, I really think it's the most important thing in the world, actually, to break free from the whole idea of the, the lone artist working alone and creating what they have, you know, because it's all about relationship and, you know, interactivities with other people. And, like, boom, as well as these other festivals are simply just platforms for that potential that would be unlocked, you know. We're all here, we're doing our thing together. And yeah, through that, through that synergy of all the different art forms coming together, not just the visual, but the music and the performance and, and you know, the costumery and everything, it all works together and like, creates this, this, this loop that occurs that really just empowers everyone. And that's really why we all come here together to see what we can do together and unlock that potential, you know, as well. I mean, I think uh, my, my personal experience is at, at Burning Man is really like so profound because it's like a whole city based on collaboration really open up amazing portals when everybody just surrenders their own individual concept of who they are as a creator or whatever and just frees himself to create with other people and uh, we create an event um, in the city uh, San Francisco called Synergenesis which is basically fueled by that idea of uh, let's bring everybody together in a really concentrated environment with the music and the art and everybody coming together and see what we can create and it's, it's so beautiful to see how much unlocked energy that we can just tap into by collaborating and releasing our own individual ideas of what we're supposed to do here. I, I agree and I think the focus on a, a cross-pollination of different artistic disciplines is really where I found the most success in working with them. I get most of my most of my main inspiration from music and musicians and different DJs and just I mean being able to really like analyze like a bass line and different parts of a song has taught me more than a lot of the artistic mentors I've had before. And it takes you out of your framework or working with, with writers or poets. I think that's or with the, with the Burning Man, even working with like artistic engineers. But it's it's bringing those worlds together that I think a lot the the value of what each of you do increases exponentially. 
besides artist, I'm also I have the honor of being able to organize a festival in Northern California and be one of the key people who gets to pick what happens at the festival. And so what we've been working on at Symbiosis, which is a new event, is putting together things like we have live painting on the stage, which is a really popular uh, thing. It's a phenomenon that's happening in North America right now is bands and uh, musicians will often have a painter on stage with them who is experiencing the music, who's experiencing the energy of the audience and working furiously in the space of a few hours to create an image that expresses how they are how they are feeling and what they're interpreting from everyone there and it's an absolutely beautiful process to watch because the audience is a part very much of what's going on the music as it changes and flows defines the current of the, the speed of the strokes or whatever they're making and and um, Andrew's worked with this and done um, digital work with this we've been combining not just the traditional media of paint but then taking this into even more further levels with um, you could, you could explain it better than I, but just trying to use um, the opportunity that we have when we come together in these events to, you know, with the decoration of the stages, to not just be a decoration, but to be an atmospheric environment that is creatively uh, built so that more creative expressions happen and, and integrating these multimedia formats has been a very, very rewarding uh, experience. What I do is, for the past few years, I've designated a lot of my intention, my time, my focus on being a live digital painter, which is going to different events and working with different musicians and creating a piece of art from start to finish. Uh, on my laptop, I have, a, I have a Wacom with a guitar strap. But um, you know, this kind of this reflects back on the first question uh, about about the culture and how art influences culture, and I find that. I have different intentions every time I get up on stage. I usually don't have a preconceived idea of what, I, what, I, what I'm doing, but when I look over the body of the work, um, in a lot of ways I consider myself almost kind of like a cultural stenographer, you know? And I think that's where we get back into like the art versus culture, where a lot of my art is really the kind of the mental, like, I don't want to say analysis, in a lot of ways really just the, like the celebration of what's going on around me. Like, I definitely feel that I've been very, I'm very grateful to be part of these, of so many different communities, with so many interesting things going on. I definitely feel very grateful that there's something, there's something, I, I know that there's something special. You know, I wouldn't come all the way out here and make all these connecting flights and go through all these tests if I didn't know at the end of the day it was worth it. You know, I have a certain amount of faith invested that my effort's gonna be worth coming to here. And so, Coming back to the art and culture, there's an, there's an aspect of an artist that lives within his culture and reflects that culture. And I think it's it's up to a lot of the great artists I've seen in the past have the ability to perceive the culture and at the same time be able to separate themselves and not get completely sucked into the song of the culture at the same time and really be able to, lack of a cliche, really to dance to their own beat. Well, it's where um, I would uh, define the artists who step outside of that culture, they are the visionaries. They are the ones who lead show the way. So we're almost out of time, but maybe I can put, there's one audience question I could put, maybe just one or two of you could answer. How can the audience and other participants at Boom play a role in helping to shape the art culture here? Any suggestions for how people can get involved in art culture creation? How could they not? You're here. No, but it has to be said that uh, in any mainstream newspaper, book, or whatever, visionary art is totally marginal and neglected and unseen. Right? That I think all of you do have that role to, to spread the word about visionary art beyond, beyond these confines if you know you have had the experience uh, i'm not saying do it just because i'm a visionary artist i'm saying do it because you've had the experience and you want to share that experience and so 
push it, you know, because it's obvious what we're doing here is unseen, unknown, neglected, beyond all belief, yeah? And I think we do share this dream that we are going to alter culture, culture. but the reality is we might be totally neglected and stamped out before we even blossom, you know? So you have a mission in a way. That's the mission that we're, you know, involved in, but it, I transfer it to you. And the mission is, you know, spread the word out that uh, and manifest the vision that you've, you've experienced uh, through our work, but also through your own visions, you know, manifested in your own words. Perfect. Live the dream. You know, I'd, I'd really encourage people to, to challenge yourselves and, you know, to challenge us at the same time. You know, when we're up here, you know, we're not all that special. I mean, I, I, I have full faith that there's several people in this audience with an incredible amount of talent. I think if there's one thing when I when I focus when I say about challenging us, if there's one critique I have about the, the visionary art scene is that sometimes I feel it's like shooting fish in a barrel. You know, like all art looks better when I'm high. You know, so don't be afraid to I mean to give really critical feedback too, really honest and, and more importantly this authentic feedback because we're here, I'm here to expose myself to people. You know, it's a very, I put myself, I'm, I will and put myself in a vulnerable position to be here because it's more of, it's more of that sort of authentic feedback that helps me and the reflection will help you at the same time. So, one of the things we're doing here at Boom is creating a global art culture and just wanted to check in with the crowd and see uh, what's being represented, what places are being represented here. Um, is there anyone here from North America? Okay, North America not too loud, but there's a few. What about South America? What about Europe? Anyone from Asia? No one from Asia. Luke, you're going to have to cheer for this one. Oceania, New Zealand and Australia. What about Africa? Sweet. What about Antarctica? Anyone representing Antarctica? Maybe. The global art cultures are a celebration of what is past and what is possible. A shamanic bridge between presence and futures. Art culture is both a vision and a vehicle for spirit. Let it invoke a return to a deeper connectedness between the inspired spiritual life of creative production and the textured material life of the approaching techno-futurism. Art is a form of life and is working with us to shape the very fabric of what's to come. It's the end of our panel. Thanks so much. Yeah, well, we have a bunch of art culture catalogs, uh, galactic trading cards. We have the visionary uh, manifesto of visionary art and art from all these artists in the gallery and in the market. So anyone who wants to talk to the artists, purchase items that can be personally signed, come on into the gallery and we'll interact a little bit more and uh, explore art culture. <laughs>